This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. News is also brought to you by Desert View Hospital. You can count on us. Welcome to News 25 here on KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, you might have heard that there were some arrests made over the Fall Festival weekend. A couple of them were juveniles. The Nye County Sheriff's Office today issued a press release regarding the four juveniles that were arrested with firearms. The Nye County Sheriff's Office is reporting that on Friday, September 23rd, Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies were advised at the Pahrump Fall Festival that a juvenile had been threatened by another juvenile with a firearm. Deputies were able to locate the suspect juveniles in the carnival area. When deputies approached the juvenile males, they took off on foot and a foot pursuit ensued. During the pursuit, the juvenile males discarded backpacks that they had in their possession. This happened near the McCullough Arena. Deputies ultimately located the males and apprehended them. They recovered the backpacks and inside the backpacks were firearms with serial numbers removed as well as narcotics according to police. Four juveniles in total were arrested ranging from ages to 14 to 16 years old. They were turned over to juvenile probation and ultimately booked into the Clark County Juvenile Detention Center. The night County Sheriff's Office says that all four of these juveniles were Pahrump residents. They have been charged with possession of firearms, drugs, and obstruction. And Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue responded to a structure fire on the south end of town this afternoon. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue, Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies, and Nye County Sheriff's Office auxiliary units were dispatched to a structure fire this afternoon on Vicki Ann Road. Traffic was closed in all directions in the area of Vicki Ann and Cass Street. No injuries were reported at the time of the incident. The fire has been extinguished at this time. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue is conducting the investigation as to what caused this blaze on the stick-built structure. And a new study from Cleveland Clinic found people with autoimmune disease such as rheumatoid arthritis have a higher complication rate after a heart attack. It was one of the largest studies that looked at patients who have suffered from heart attacks uh, that have conditions that we define as autoimmune conditions compared to patients who do not have autoimmune conditions. Dr. Heba Wasif was one of the authors on the study. She says more than 1.6 million adults ages 65 years and older were involved. The results showed those with an autoimmune disease were more likely to die, develop heart failure, or have a second heart attack. They were also less likely to receive common procedures to restore blood flow after a heart attack, which could be because they are at higher risk for procedure-related complications. Dr. Wasif says they don't want these results to scare the public. However, it is important for those with an autoimmune disease to take proactive steps to help prevent heart disease. There was a survey that surveyed primary care providers. And to my surprise, that many, patient, many primary care providers were not familiar or comfortable discussing uh, the risk with their patients. And many patients were not even aware of the risk of or increased risk of um, cardiovascular diseases. So there is a role for education and prevention. Well, Dr. Wasif says more research is needed to further understand why this group is at a higher risk for complications. However, it could be a possibility that they are more likely to have core comorbidities, which could play a role. Also, we wanted to uh, let everybody know today was Fire Chief Scott Lewis's 20th anniversary there at Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue, and they did have a little celebration for him today. We wanted to let you know that we will be showing that on tomorrow night's uh, broadcast as well. And uh, there was a two-vehicle crash that occurred this afternoon on Highway 372 and Pahrump Valley Boulevard. Luckily, 
no injuries as a result of that crash. We'll have more local news, including the Board of County Commissioner and paper ballots coming up in the November elections after this break. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Also brought to you by Silver State Health. Visit silverstatehealth.org or call 702-471-0420 for an appointment. News 25, local news you can count on. Welcome back to News 25. Well, Nye County Clerk Mark Comp says his office is ready for Election Day. Nye County has decided to use paper ballots for the November 8th general election, which will require a new set of procedures. During a presentation at Nye County Commissioner's board meeting, Comp explained how the process will work and what he's doing to ensure election integrity. We're going to use paper ballots at the polls instead of touch screens. We're going to have one ADA touch screen at each poll for those individuals with special needs, similar to what we have always in the past. We will use tabulators or vote counters uh, will be used for all ballots as our primary method of determining the vote result. Uh, these were used for 63% of the ballots in the, the primary for all those that came in through the mail. We're extending the use of those tabulators for the remaining 37% of the the ballots. We will do a parallel hand count process that will mirror the uh, tabulation process using the same batches as in the tabulators. We want to make sure that there's transparency in the process and we have solutions for that. We also plan on strengthening some of the check-in, signature, and ballot controls. As far as the paper ballots, mail-in ballots will be sent out to the citizens as, and voters as previously. Uh, everyone who is a registered active voter will get a ballot. Uh, the, that process is well underway, and we anticipate that by the 10th of October, those ballots will be put in the mail. Basically, the same identical paper ballot will be completed by the voter at the polls. The voters will drop their ballot box in the secure box at the polls. So basically, they're going to be performing the same function that they could have at their kitchen table, and they're going to do that at the polls with the paper ballot. 50 ballots will come in uh, from the tabulator uh, with a tabulation batch number associated with each batch that's assigned by the tabulator so that we will be able to compare the hand count batches to the tabulated batches in the future. That will be sent to a tally team who will count the votes and use a three-way match to verify that all the tally sheets match up, and then those tally sheets and the batch control documents will go to a summarization process. We will enter those in a log to keep track of the totals by precinct by batch. The hand count team is going to be a five-person uh, team. One person who will read the ballot out loud, so in other words, read the winners of the contest. There will be someone watching over their shoulder to make sure that they are reading the ballot correctly. And then there will be three talliers who will put hash marks by the name of the individual who won that vote on that ballot. Once all the 50 ballots are through, the talliers will compare their results. And as long as all three talliers votes match for each race and each individual, then that gets verified by the verifier and the reader. They all sign off under per penalty of uh, perjury uh, and that they have agreed that that ballot is in line. If we find that any of those races, there's a difference between the talliers, then we will recount those races alone on a special recount tally sheet that will be also attached to the batch and sent on to the total and summarization process. How quickly do you expect us to have results on election day? I, I fully anticipate having the res preliminary results uh, by 10 o'clock like we've always tried to do. Well, a call to a prompt home for a domestic disturbance ends with one man under arrest and one facing a charge of domestic battery by strangulation. Brad Francis has more. On the morning of September 17th, Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies were dispatched to a Pahrump home for a report of a verbal domestic disturbance that had happened earlier that day. Officers met with James Del Toro and the alleged female victim whose name is redacted from the police report. In that report, deputies say that woman explained that Del Toro had taken her laptop and phone earlier that morning to look through them. She went on to say her argument with Del Toro had lasted throughout the night, explaining that he was upset because of her work in the 
adult industry, which requires her to talk with male clients in a way he did not like. The woman told officers that during that altercation, Del Toro grabbed her and pushed her around, and at one point, he put his hands around her neck while she was on the bed, strangling her to the point where she could not breathe for a few seconds and became dizzy. In their report, officers say the woman had fresh bruises on both arms and her neck, which they describe as appearing to be consistent with the appearance of a finger pushing into the skin and consistent with the way she described Del Toro grabbing her neck. When deputies questioned Del Toro, they say he admitted to pushing and grabbing the victim. At the conclusion of their investigation, officers determined Del Toro was the primary aggressor. He was transported to the Nye County Detention Center, where he was booked on one count of domestic battery by strangulation. All right, more news, including your save a pet, right after this break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. This segment of the news is brought to you by John Air. For all your heating and air conditioning needs, call 775-751-2372. Well, there was free airplane rides for kids out there at the Calvada Airport over the weekend. We're going to tell you all about that. We got uh, about 100 ones signed up, and we'll have to see who shows up. Um, over the time, um, we had like 10 planes coming out to fly kids. As of right now, we got like 77 kids that went up. Uh, tell you what, um, seeing their faces with the, once they get out of the plane, um, it was really great. Smiling and excited, and some take videos of a, while they're up, fly over their um, houses and talk to the pilots and and listen to the air traffic control through their headsets. So these pilots um, volunteer their time and uh, their planes. And they get a little bit of fuel um, compensation, right? Yes, um, we give them um, average of about 15 gallons of fuel and that's through our uh, paid through our uh, pancake breakfast we have every year in April. It's a great way for people to come out and um, see our airport, talk about airplanes and, and get a good breakfast. And we were blessed by uh, having a great turnout this year for our breakfast. And they're more than happy to um, take the fuel for their uh, time and, and uh, we appreciate it. There was a lot of great aircraft out there, especially a, a trainer uh, B-34 plane uh, that uh, Navy cadets fly for the first time. They get to wear a helmet with that one and the pilot wears it so it's like military style. Even the pilots and uh, adults and were uh, envy of that wanting to go up in it. <laughs> I would love to have been there. Um, this is an event that helps uh, um, it kind of expose um, young um, people to aircraft, right? Starts them up by their first flight and uh, get them used to uh, getting up in the air, talking to uh, pilots and uh, uh, there's programs through the Young Eagles that they can uh, sign on after they get their flight and mm -hmm. uh, have their uh, logbook. They can log in on um, to the computer and uh, have uh, programs that they can complete throughout their um, young lives and uh, older they get they can start thinking about uh, getting in a plane and uh, start flying. How can people find out more information about the EAA Young Eagles? Um, get on um, Young Eagles uh, day dot org mm -hmm. and uh, you go online there and it gives you all the flights that throughout the uh, state and uh, programs that they got going on or you can just go on through eaa.org and they will have all kinds of different programs through their organization for the kids from eight years old from building a foam airplane to uh, different uh, stages of aviation. All right we'll have your break and your save a pet in just a moment. All right, well, we are going to go to save a pet right now. So we're going to see Thor, who is at Pets Are Worth Saving. Today's Save a Pet segment is made possible by Realty Executives in Action. Put the team at Realty Executives in action for you. Hi, I'm Tressa with Pets Are Worth Saving, and we have with us today is Thor. Thor is a one-year-old Brindle Dalmatian mix, and this is a great dog. He just, he loves everybody. He really is good with kids. 
He's actually been known to have tea parties with them. He's good with other dogs. He's good with cats. He's just all around, great dog, lots of energy, so he wants to play and be with people, be with other dogs. You can meet or find more, get more information about Thor by calling 775-253-5051 or going to our store at 7121 Homestead Road here in Pahrump. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. All right, well, we're looking at Mount Charleston out there. You know, Vegas had a bunch of rain today. I wonder if we're having rain within our forecast. We'll find out in just a minute. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hello, good evening, Nevada. It's John Quiller from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios on a Wednesday. Feeling positively wonderful. It's a wonderful Wednesday, let's say that. Fernley and Fallon, 98, 88 and 90 degrees. Wonderful fall weather. Look at you, Carson City at 83. Tied with beautiful Tonopah, who gets the over-under award and wins the Cool Spot Award today. Tonopah, way to go. Goldfield, chasing at 85. You'll get there one day. Uh, Beatty, 94 degrees. 98 out in Amargosa. Oh, my gosh, it's a hot spot out there. And uh, Las Vegas, 95 degrees. We tied today with Vegas. Hey, congratulations to all of us. And uh, as we sneer over the border of California and look at uh, Death Valley, 110 degrees, pff, you can have it. All right, here in the Paradise of Perum, let's take a look. 92 degrees, that's our current temperature. 95, just a little bit earlier. South southeasterly winds to 11 miles per hour all afternoon long. Didn't really like it, but you know, 11 miles per hour. Hey, it's not like a hurricane. We, you know, we're blessed. Sun rose this morning at 637. Setting this evening at 631. Seems a little early in it, earlier all the time. Fans of night rejoice. We're heading to a low tonight of 71 degrees under uh, clear skies, beautiful star watching, and those east southeasterly winds to just 10 miles per hour. That'll be all right. It'll be all right out there, star watching. As we head on into the week, what do we got? Sunshine. Look at this, four or five days, five days of sunshine. Beautiful. See a little cloud cover come on a Tuesday and Wednesday, return to normal. But uh, look at those temperatures, uh, hugging the low 90s comfortably throughout the, uh, the day and in the evening, 67 degrees, wonderful stuff. 10 mile per hour winds throughout the week, not going to be a trouble. In fact, I think this weekend is going to be a record setter uh, for uh, being awesome. So record setting awesome weather this weekend, plan for it. All right, back to the desk. Here's Deanna. Well, you know, there's so many events coming up, and that's super exciting stuff. Of course, the Pancake Breakfast, which is happening at the Senior Center uh, this Saturday morning, and it is going to be from 8 to noon. They have that event that's happening um, on Saturday night at the same place, the Senior Center, 1370 West Basin Avenue. That begins at 5 p.m., and that's going to be a little show that's happening there. Of course, um, on November 5th, you know that uh, Battleborn Financial is going to be having an event um, at their location location. That's on Calvada and Pahrump Valley Boulevard. I'm going to be uh, DJing that event. That's going to be lots of fun. Lots of um, just, uh, you know, booth information about Medicare, about how to sign up for insurance. Uh, Brunt Levitt's bringing that all to you. And it's going to be a really fun event. Later on in the evening at 5 p.m. at the Saddle West, you're going to have the USO show. And that's being brought to you by Miss Senior Golden Years and the Nevada Silver Tappers. And don't forget at the Senior Center on October 13th, they are also having a Medicare event. And I'm DJing that one too as well. So I'm all over the place. I don't know why. But anyways, it's going to be from 9 until 1 p.m. That's 1370 West Basin Avenue. So many different events that are happening. And of course, uh, we want to remind everybody, um, you know, we had um, the uh, whole entire sheriff's debate um, up on our YouTube page, and it was streamed live from the event at the Senior Center on Monday night. And we still are researching what happened because we had it streamed on our Facebook page, and then yesterday it kind of magically disappeared. We don't know exactly if Facebook took it down or what happened, but we did upload it to YouTube today and then shared it on Facebook today. So if you missed seeing the entire sheriff's debate between Sheriff Sharon Morley and uh Joe McGill. Um, you can still watch that entire debate. It has now been re-uploaded to our Facebook 
and to YouTube as well in its entirety um, this afternoon. So uh, feel free. I know a lot of people wanted to see that whole debate, and that was very important debate, bringing a lot of new um, light to both of our candidates and making an informed um, decision on who your sheriff should be in the November election. Of course, you're more than happy to watch that whole entire thing on our KPVM Facebook page and KPVM YouTube channel. And for more information on that, go to those pages. If you have any other questions, give us a call, 775-727-9400. And you can always download the Local B TV app on your iPhone, um, your, um, of course, um, on any Android, on your laptop or any tablet, on smart devices, and of course, your smart TV as well. Thank you so much for watching us here on KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio. I'm Deanna O'Donnell from all of us up here on the Hill. Have a great night. We'll see you back here tomorrow.